The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday morning. We got some GDP numbers. We got a little bit of Fed speak out there, and we got markets accelerating to higher price levels, almost at that high we were talking about yesterday, right? What are you talking about? 46.34, I think, is the high from July. We talked about the 1 to 1.618 expansion, just above 4,600, about 4,607. Markets this morning up by about half a percent in the S&Ps right now, trading up 24 points at 45.87. We were just as high as 45.90. NASDAQ 100, we catch a bit, up 113 points. That's 7 tenths percent in the positive. The Dow up a similar 112 points right now. That's 3 tenths percent in the positive, 35,556. And the Russell right now up you talk about volatility, man. Up nine tenths percent. We were just at 1820. We're up by 16 points in the Russell. Crude was almost just up to $78. We're back a bit. Still positive by 82 cents on the session at 77.23. How about that gold contract yesterday, man? If you haven't signed up for the gold report, folks, my dad's outstanding weekly newsletter. Check it out. Great time to sign up for it. 2072 was the number we got last night. Is it 2089? 2089 is the all-time high on the futures, man. We got within a stone's throw of that last night. We're pushing the highs this morning. And what does that have to do with? Well, it has to do with yields, and it has to do with the dollar index. And yet again, we get the 10-year right now. Let's get the exact number. What are we sitting at right now? We're under 4.3%. Absolutely remarkable, man. The 10-year right now, up another 12 ticks at 110.08. We were as high as 110.14 in the overnight session. The 30-year up 21 ticks at 117.02. Uh, great day to have some Fed speak, some GDP numbers. We talked to our man Kevin Hinks after the first break. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. We always talk some commodities, foreign currencies, and yields come into that picture as well, of course, at 40 past the hour with Teddy. Dollar index this morning. We jumped to 102.46. We're still basically almost flat. You're actually positive a bit to 102.88 on the dollar index. And we jump over to the VIX, 12.58. Do we get an 11 handle? It's very possible as this market just continues higher to say the least. All right, where do we kick things off? How about GDP? 5.2% in the third quarter. Um, and that's more than first estimated is how they surmise it there. Uh, upwardly revised, 5.2% annualized pace in the third quarter, the fastest in nearly two years. Consumer spending advanced at a less robust 3.6% rate. The downward revision to household outlays reflected slower growth in services spending. Yeah, after a previously reported decline, business investment was revised up to a 1.3% gain on the back of firm outlays for structures. Housing also stronger than was initially reported. Um, so quite a GDP number. You get this morning, the the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation metric, the personal consumption expenditure, revised down to 2.8% annual rate, excluding food and energy, 2.3%. Now, we get that number on tomorrow morning for October is what we get. But nonetheless, that's fueling some of the action this morning as these markets trade higher in pretty dramatic fashion. But it would make sense, like we were talking about yesterday, right? In terms of, excuse me, one second. Pulling up these headlines. In terms of the numbers, let's take a look at that S&P like we were talking about yesterday, because today might be the day. And it would be interesting if today's the day. You're talking about a recent high of 46.3450, July 24th, the week of. At that high, now what that also correlates to, back to a daily on the S&P, if you missed the program yesterday, that 1 to 1.618 expansion of the pullback you had starting in October, pretty remarkable, right? That you're talking about only five or six weeks ago. Five or six weeks ago, folks, you trade from 4,400 and change down to 4,100 and change, and we're pushing 4,600 and change just over the period of five or six weeks. But guess what? Yields have done dramatic things since then as well. As you had the yield, where was that high? What was the date of the high you were coming in? About October 12th, yeah. 
okay? And look at how it goes, right? The 10-year trading basically in step with the markets with yield inverted, as in the market when it was making that 46.34, had the 10-year at 108.16. You'd gone all the way down to 105.10. That's when you had the 10-year yield above 5%. That's when you had the stock market at 4,100 and change. And since then, the 10-year is up five full points, okay? The 10-year yield has dropped from above 5% to now below 4.3%. And at the same period of time, you've seen the stock market accelerate in pretty dramatic fashion, man. You're talking about some lofty numbers, to put it lightly. But nonetheless, we come into the Fed's preferred inflation gauge tomorrow. So keep your eye on that one, man. Maybe we get that final push higher and we get a little bit of a relief uh, pullback potentially on that economic number tomorrow. But we go right into it after that, man. A week from Friday, we get non-farm payrolls. And two weeks from today, we have a Fed meeting. So it just keeps going, man. The money, um, the economic data is going to come right into that holiday season. Absolutely remarkable when you look at it. The, yeah, December 13th is two weeks away. And Christmas, well, what, December 1st is Friday. So we're coming into December and December 1st. Absolutely remarkable. All right, let's jump around to some of the action this morning. We jump over to Foot Locker shares. They are trading higher this morning. They come out with their numbers, and they rise on uh, earnings beat and gives a more upbeat sales outlook is the headline here. Let's pull it over from CNBC. So Foot Locker beat third quarter earnings and sales expectations. Um, they expect better same-store sales this year than it previously did. And yeah, they're dealing with inflation and Nike's focus on direct sales. Boy, they sell a lot of Nikes and that's they're trying to get over that hump. Same store sales decline of 8.5 to 9 percent. The market was looking for 9 to 10. Pretty, pretty remarkable, right? You say, ah, sales are only going to drop by 8.5 to 9 percent. But it shouldn't be too surprising when you take a look at this chart. <laughs> we just dropped from 45 bucks down to 15. We just dropped from 65 at the market peak in 2001. You're sitting at 23. You're going to pop to 26. But you're just coming back into this consolidation that you were basically in from May all the way into the last earnings event in August. And all you've done is gotten right back into this range. So you're going to have some consolidation. You're going to have to work your way through that area. If you're looking for Foot Locker, uh, the upper boundary line, these are weekly bars. You can see it had a $2.50 range for basically three straight months. And you're going to be back in that range. So maybe $27.50. See if it breaks above that price level for Foot Locker. We jump over to GM. How about a price tag, man? The union labor deals will increase co increase cost by $9.3 billion and add approximately $575 in cost per vehicle during the terms of the deals. Uh, interesting in terms of the... How do I put this delicately, right? The bias that is presented. Uh, it's important to realize who you're getting this information from. Um, you're getting it from the company. Of course, the company is going to say, hey, you know, all these employees, they're going to make $10 billion a cost. They're going to make me add $500 to every vehicle in your car. You know, you don't hear that said when GM is passing on the profits to their shareholders. You don't see GM saying, hey, you know, we made $10 billion, $20 billion this year. That means for every single car that you buy, we're just passing, you know, x amount of dollars on so it's always a pr battle uh right now especially on the heels of that historic strike gm said 9.3 billion in labor cost increases are expected to occur and that's all the way 2028 folks, those car companies all right folks stay tuned we're 15 minutes away from the open bell we're coming back with kevin hanks don't go away if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. back folks we got the s p's up by 20 points right now markets catching a little bit of a lift we got yields pulling back as well to talk about some of the action let's jump over to our man kevin hinks every trading day folks 12 noon eastern time fast market from the schwab network right here on tiger tv check it out your host kevin hinks tom white they're usually walking you through hypothetical trade setups using options all of them have defined risk quite an attribute uh all of them defined risk usually three trades a program Kevin, I feel like it's a uh, it's it's a record player that's broken. We got higher prices in the market. We got lower yields coming at us yet again. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yep, you know the market liked the revisions to GDP and the path of least resistance with comments from uh, Fed Governor Waller yesterday. Uh, I think puts this market on a path. Now tomorrow, we need core year-over-year -year PCE to come in at a nice soft number to keep this this rally going because what can stop this rally is reigniting inflation. So with, with, with the GDP now 5.2%, uh, the, the, the revisions to personal income, disposable income, and personal savings were all slightly higher. That's, a good, that's good but the question is is good news good news again and it looks like at least to start the day good news is good news tommy it sure does man i got green across the board on that thinkorswim platform uh we talk about many times kevin that sometimes we talk about equities that you guys cover on fast market maybe some equities have a high bar for their earnings some equities have a low bar for their earnings i find myself kevin looking at this market right now saying the bar is pretty high man we just traded from 4100 and change we're pushing 4600 you just had yields go from above on a 10-year above five percent we're at 4.3 right now we're at 4.28 when i started the program 20 minutes ago what do you think about the high bar you said it tomorrow we got some economic data do you see room for this market to run because in my opinion man we're, we're it's quite a percentage wise acceleration right you've come on the program before and said geez from those numbers we were at on october 27th just gangbuster numbers to the upside uh do you think this market might struggle a little bit to push higher with that bar being so high right now well the low bar and high bar is stock specific right I mean, sure, the Magnificent Seven, incredibly high bar. That's why you saw NVIDIA come out with earnings, and the stock really hasn't moved, or actually slightly lower. But there's a lot of companies out there like Target, like 
Dollar Tree that came out with earnings yesterday. It's slightly lower, but kind of hanging in there this morning. There's a very low bar on some of these names. Remember, Tommy, 493 companies haven't had as good of a year as the seven that are driving this market higher. So uh, I think there's still room for some type of rotation into those other names. But, yeah, it, it's a little dicey. Right now, this market continues to be led by seven key stocks. We need the other 493 to show up, Tommy. Just jumping through some of those magnificent seven as you were talking about, and it looks like uh, Microsoft's never going down, Kevin. I don't know. I kid, but quite a chart of Microsoft. All of them pretty magnificent. Uh, but, boy, Microsoft, higher yet again by almost $2 this morning, going to open at an all-time high. With that in mind, we march forward, man. You laid it out. We got some important economic data tomorrow morning for inflation. But do you guys have any equities you're talking about coming up at 12 o'clock today, Kevin? More earnings coming out, Tommy. We're going to cover them all. Uh, like Foley will do a presentation on five below the discount, off-price, kind of low-priced retailer that's doing so well. We'll, we'll cover Salesforce that's coming out with earnings and Snowflake that's coming out with earnings. So three good earnings uh, trades today to look at, Tommy. Three great stocks, man. I, You know, it's interesting. They just opened a five below. I have not been in a five below, I think, myself, uh, but they oh, just opened one. don't take one. your kids in there. I, you know what? We're probably going to make it there, though, Kevin, because they just opened one in a public shopping market near me. And uh, just the presence itself, I found myself saying just the uh, appeal of the store, maybe the curbside appeal, whatever it was. I found myself struck saying, hey, that's they got a good curbside appeal, man. They got a good location. They're right next to Publix. Everybody goes to Publix in Florida. Uh, so we'll see. But we'll be watching the show today to see what you guys have to talk about. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning. And we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure, folks. Check it out. Three great stocks. Yeah, five below. Um, I was unfamiliar. The only reason I'm really familiar is because the stock market and uh, they're popping up in some pretty decent spots, man. You know, I'm up near Lakeland, Florida, and we don't have the same type of huge malls that they have in the cities, right? We got uh, the closest thing probably is the Brandon Mall that we really enjoy. Uh, they have the malls in Tampa, of course, International Plaza, great mall in Tampa. But you have a lot of smaller malls, right? Florida, many strip malls in Florida. And they took over this one spot at the Publix supermarket near us. And it, boy, it's a good presence that they got in there. I can see it in a big way. Yeah, so Five Below and Salesforce. This one's always an interesting one, man. Salesforce on quite an acceleration from the beginning of the year. Well off the highs of 311 right now. Salesforce going to open uh, about $3 to the upside as we got markets pushing higher price to kick things off. And yeah, Kevin laid it out well. It'll be interesting to see in terms of do we get uh, a rotation of some sorts because there are plenty of stocks that, I mean, you know, he mentioned Target, right? What about Disney, right? You talk about low bars, just some that come to mind that have, vastly underperformed as we have the market pushing all-time highs. Disney, one that comes to mind. Target, another one that comes to mind, pushing 131, well off the highs of 268 for Target shares. And this market just pushing higher, up by 23 points as we come into the opening bell. All right, what else we got going on? So Charlie Munger passes away last night. That news hitting just before the close, actually. Um, and it was interesting that even at the ripe age of 99, he's 99, man. He was born in January of, I got to recalibrate my brain to make sure I say it correctly. Yeah, 1924, January of 1924, just missed uh, the centennial by about a month or so. But it was interesting that, uh, you know, no real reaction in terms of, I imagine that the company Berkshire will be okay with his passing. But it is interesting that everything matters in this market, man. There was when the news hit in the final 10 minutes in the market yesterday. You got Berkshire trading down about $2 off of that. But guess what? You get it back by this morning. Maybe that was the computers, right? Maybe that was uh, trading off those headlines. Um, nonetheless, interesting. All right. Other news as we come into the opening bell. This one's interesting just from a uh, dollar's sense. Mark Cuban, he's selling a majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks to the Adelson family. Now, here's the kicker, okay? Maybe we'll talk a little bit about this one even afterwards. So Adelson, Adelson is Las Vegas Sands, okay? And what he wants is he wants gambling in Texas. And they want to build a huge, basically, development around potentially a new stadium for the Dallas Mavericks, okay? 
And he's selling $2 billion worth of Las Vegas stock or 10 percent. Oh, excuse me. It's not him. He's passed away. Right. Um, it's his wife, Miriam Adelson, excuse me, and the family. OK. 10 percent of the stake. OK. And I was reading about this last night. That this could be one of the biggest lobbying plays out there. OK. And we'll finish this one up after the break. I mean, kudos to. Cuban. I think he bought the team for something like $285 million about 20 years ago when he cashed in. And he's selling that for, I think, $3.5 billion is the number. And we'll talk about this when we get back because they are trying to create, and it would make sense, man. He owns Las Vegas Sands, okay? They're trying to bring that to, can you imagine, Dallas, right? The Dallas Mavericks building a brand new stadium, and the hook is going to be... They'll pay for the brand new stadium. They'll do all that. They legalize gambling and they build a resort where you have literally the stadium contained within a casino. Think about those dollars. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the market open. You got the S&Ps up by 21 points. Apologize. I'm a little stuffed up, man. We got kids in the house, and it seems like they're always catching a cold for the last month or two. This season as it circles around the house. I'm feeling good, just a little stuffed up, but the market's feeling good this morning, man. Up by 22. We open with the S&Ps up half a percent. So finishing that conversation, right? And this was a cool um, 
Twitter thread, X thread, whatever you're going to call it. So interesting. I mean, I guess it's eventually going to be called X, but I feel like people are always going to call it Twitter at some point. So think about this for a second, right? The Adelson family is buying the Mavs, the most expensive and clever lobby, lobbying play in history. Okay, now what they could, and this is all speculation, okay? But boy, it makes a lot of sense when you think about the business they're in. They're selling Las Vegas sand stock to secure ownership in the Mavericks, okay? So eventually they could dangle a fully private funded new arena in a top five US city in exchange for the legalization of casino gaming in Texas and build an integrated casino resort within the same complex. Can you imagine it, man? Now, we've seen how Las Vegas has taken off. He's probably seen how Las Vegas has taken off in terms of hockey, football. They got baseball coming, I believe, right? It makes sense with the gambling. We have seen some of the gambling houses, the sports books they have out there now. But you go over some of the facts that line up with this, and it does make sense, okay? And then you look at the fact that Cuban is still running it. That could make a lot of sense in the context of everything, too, okay? In January, the Dallas Morning News said Las Vegas Sands brought on 63 lobbyists for the 2023 session with a mandate to spend up to almost $6 million of trying to legalize commercial casino gaming, okay? Cuban has made comments in the past about wanting an integrated casino resort to house a future arena for the team in Dallas. Who wouldn't want, right, to be part of a development that where the sports team plays is where the gambling takes place, okay? The Mavs were the only major sports team in Texas not to strike a sports betting partnership. Now, this gentleman, not familiar with who he is, okay, and he has no authority, but it makes sense, all right? They were the only major sports team in Texas not to strike a sports betting partnership when there were legalization efforts. It was odd for them to sit on the sidelines and not take free money from sports book sponsorships. But if the goal and focus was casino gaming in Texas and they were aligned with Adelson, it makes sense that they could not get tied to a sports book partner. Um, yeah, but this is probably tied to casino gaming and it's tied to potentially cut out what's going on did i lose your mic did i just lose my battery a bummer oh it's back okay uh not sure what happened there let me make sure we're coming through we coming through folks yeah something's going on here al we back okay you got me uh it would make sense that gaming's involved it would make sense when you get the adelson family involved that they're looking towards gaming it would make sense that a city like Dallas, right, you see the amount of money that some of these cities and states have to pay to help a new stadium come about, and they would need none of that. All they're going to say is, hey, listen, we're going to build a multi-billion dollar development. We're going to build a new stadium. You're going to have the Mavericks. You're going to have a huge casino enterprise. That's going to create jobs. It's going to create tax revenue, and you don't have to pay for any of it. All you got to do is legalize gambling. Not a lot of money, man, when you think about it. And and let's put it this way. They're not dumping $2 billion or 3.5, okay? That money doesn't lose value. They could theoretically own this team, keep that value, and let that value pay for itself without its, you know, you pay for lobbyists, that value is gone. You have to make that value up later. You buy the Mavericks for $3.5 billion to use that as clout in your lobbying, that money doesn't go away. You can probably still sell that if you wanted to. Different scenario, but I found it very interesting. Now, we segue, because it's interesting. I found out this morning, rolling through Instagram, as I woke up, practically, that sports gambling's coming to Tampa. Did not know this, did not know it. I'm not a huge sports gambler, folks. Very difficult to make money in sports gambling and to beat the VIG. That's the tough part, right? There are people who can um, pick more games, winners than losers, but you have to beat the VIG. You have to be better than the VIG to be profitable. Very few people can do that. And there are some that can do it for sure. Uh, but so I'm not a huge sports fan for gambling. But yeah, the Hard Rock launches a limited rollout of sports betting app in Florida. So this one's going to be interesting. It's going to play out in the courts. They tried to do it two years ago. It got shut down originally. It looks like it may head back to the Florida Supreme Court first. All indications are uh, DeSantis has put in five of the seven members on the Florida Supreme Court. Seems like they feel like that that Supreme Court will side with DeSantis to go forward here. Uh, when it makes it to the Supreme Court, a little bit of a different deal as they talk about the potential um, where this gambling could be taking place 
off of tribal lands. And that's the different part. This is it gets into the Indian reservations, right, and all that stuff. And you, they have a quote in here from Brett Kavanaugh, previously said in a Penn statement that if the compact authorized gambling off tribal lands, it would likely violate. Uh, and what does that stand for? They got it up here. The Indian Gaming Regulatory Act and pose serious constitutional questions. Not sure how that plays out, but nonetheless, they're going to let it play out. And the Florida Supreme Court probably won't get there until the first quarter of 2024. So legal gambling in sports is coming to Florida, man. And it's, uh, yeah, it's coming in like a week. If you got the app already, you can use it. You can get on the waiting list for the app in a certain ways, and you can gamble at kiosks they have set up at the Hard Rock in Tampa. Uh, the next one is when's when's online poker coming? Because it's really unfortunate that people can just lose all their money sports gambling, and somehow online poker still is a black mark that is not brought. But hopefully that brings it to the next level. And the kicker there is, folks, because in online poker, there are actually a lot of people that can play to a level that they beat the VIG. Sports gambling, very few people win. You win in the short term. Uh, poker, very, very very few people win as well, okay? But it's a much easier game to beat the VIG in because you're playing against other opponents as opposed to playing against the house. And that's why in a casino, folks, if you ever see like the Hard Rock in Tampa, they bury the poker room in the back of the casino. They don't want you to find the poker room. They make very little money off the poker room, folks. You play a, You play a cash game, you buy in for $200. Let's say you're playing nine-handed. Everyone buys in for $200, okay? That game is raking 3 to $5 per hand usually. They, they take money out of the rake per a hand on a percentage basis. And you're doing maybe 30 hands an hour, something like that, okay? Fails nothing compared to if you have those nine people sitting down at a blackjack table. The last thing you want is somebody who's looking for action, stumbles upon the poker room, and plays poker instead of that person looking for action, sits down at blackjack, roulette, craps, baccarat, whatever it be. Uh, so maybe that's part of the reason as well. Nonetheless, gambling, it's coming, and we're seeing it play out with the uh, Mavericks getting sold to the Adelson, Adelson family. And stay tuned for that one, as you're going to see that development get pushed forward, I imagine, because that just makes too much sense when you got a family that's entrenched in gambling, right, buying um, a sports team. To, to probably combine the two of them. All right, and the markets push a little bit higher on the open. We just made it to 45.93. We're back a bit. NASDAQ pushing higher. Check it out. Up a full percent. 16,203. NASDAQ. What are we, 3 or 4% from all time highs in the NASDAQ, man? 16,767 is that number. Dow up by 95. We jump over to yields this morning. The 10 year. Yeah, up 13 ticks right now. And that is going to correlate, I think a number yeah we're under 4.3 percent right now 4.27 percent stay tuned folks we'll be talking yields we'll be talking currencies we'll be talking commodities we're coming back with our man teddy kegstad don't go away TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 29 points right now, pushing 4592. We might see that 4600 number before the end of the program. Uh, we got yields pulling back a bit, 4.27, just like that, man. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. Every Monday morning, he puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You try it out, it's $97, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got a couple of webinars you get in there as well, so try that out, folks. And don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars under the Services tab as well. If you're into candlestick charting, Teddy's written an outstanding book on candlesticks. He did a webinar for us, Japanese Candlestick Patterns, Stock and Option Strategies, and he's also got one on calendar stock option spreads in the Services section. Check those out, but boy, we're gonna talk some action today. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, where do you want to kick things off? It seems like the trend is intact from the last time we talked. We got yields dropping. Uh, we got the market trading higher, and we got a little bit of weakness in that dollar. Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, you know, <clears throat> everything you just said is actually right. happening right now in the marketplace, that's for sure. Um, you know, I think right now you got to look at these markets in a corrective phase still, and I think that the levels that we hit yesterday and today especially – we hit some key areas. So I think where we really what you have to look at now is what happens after today. So I think that the, the points that we've trended either up into or down into and the various FX crosses right now are, are very key areas. I think you can see either some stability or um, there are critical levels that if we take those out, um, then we're starting to look at these, uh, what is, I think, a corrective phase. It may not necessarily be a corrective phase anymore. So we're kind of at a very good inflection point right now. You mentioned some of those pairings. Which <laughs> ones you want to jump to? I mean, I was jumping around as you were doing it. Boy, the euro is on quite a uh -huh. trend right now. Even a little bit of a rollover on the dollar yen, although that one not quite as, as dramatic. Um, uh -huh. What parents are you looking at the most? I know you say that you know the dollar index is a basket, but sometimes that basket is behaving a little bit differently within it. Which ones are you really looking at there? Uh, well, I like the uh, the high in the pound today. I think that's a critical area. I think also the euro, U.S. dollar. It's just shy of a very good uh, price target, and these are these are key areas where I think that uh, it's. It wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit of a pullback and see a little strength in the dollar. Um, <clears throat> we had a sell signal in the yield curve on Friday that was negated yesterday, so but not by much. It's it's hovering, so the yields aren't exactly retreating. You know, they're kind of just buffering up against resistance, so they're not like piercing through that area trying to push the trend. And I think you really have to be observant of that. Like normally, you know, yields are a good indicator of especially FX movement. And right now they're kind of stalling. So I think that in this where we're at now, we're kind of at that inflection point where the currencies are breaking away from the yield uh, function. Um, and But the thing is, you can't break away that much. So if the yields 
just stay where they're at, if they're not con going to continue to be in retreat, it's going to be very hard for the U.S. dollar to be under pressure. You know, so I'd be very cautious right now, especially if you see any type of uptick in yields, it's going to be very likely that you'll see a snap back in these in the, in the various currency pairs versus the dollar. Yeah, the moves have been pretty dramatic, man. We're under 4.3% right now on the 10-year. Um, we started at over 5%. And so is that part of the discussion there, just in terms of the dramatic move we've had? 7 tenths percent on a 10-year, man, quite the pullback. And we are, sure. I just pulled up the 10-year as you were talking about. I know you look at the 30-year as well a lot. But pretty interesting, on, on a price basis, the 10-year, basically back to that low in March, almost to like the tick. I got a low there of 110.12, and we're at 110.12, so we're running into some resistance on a couple levels. But is that really part of that conversation, just the, the size of the move so quickly in yields from above 5 to 4.3? Absolutely. You are nailing it on the head right there, and especially like when you look at the 10-year and the shorter-term rates. You know, <clears throat> they drive interest rates in the short run, and they're pretty stretched. You know, I mean, is, is the market or are people happy with yields and retreat? Of course they are, you know, especially with, the, you know, the uptick that we've had over the last year and a half. But if you really look at it on a, on a proportionate basis, you know, it, it's just a minor pullback right now, you know. And also you still have to look at it, like you said, if you're at March levels and you think about what's happened since then, unless we truly go to a pausing or dovish stance, odds are that we're pretty much at the cap of where we're going to be, you know, as far as the retreat on, on the yields right now, you know, so it's just uh, the, the fundamentals and the technicals don't add up for any type of extended rally. You know, I'm sure that anyone that if they're looking to buy a home or something like that or refinance it, finance, if they haven't, you know, they're hoping for a Christmas gift and, and you know, having lower yields trend into the year, which very way may, may happen. But we have to really watch those numbers. If we have any inflationary numbers that you know stick out, you're going to see. I think the yields really rally very quickly. You know, so yeah. I think it's very sensitive right now. You know, so in, in, as far as where we are at right now, sure. you know, I mean, everybody wants, you know, or thinks, you know, consensus-wise is that the Fed is done. I would be very careful calling that, you know, that that shot. You know, never try and pick a top or a bottom and. I don't know about you how things are in Florida, but I go to the store too, like everyone else, and I don't know where this downtick in inflation is because prices at the store aren't going down, they're going up. You know, gas is re relatively stable, but um, <clears throat> I don't know anything out there that doesn't cost at least 50 to 100 or more percent more than it did just two years ago. Nothing's yeah. coming down, you know? So unless we see a retraction, in pricing, you know, and I'm not saying necessarily deflation, but just some sort of retraction. Um, where is this illusion that inflation has disappeared? You know, so I think it's just not we don't have that force of inflation like we had in 2021 and 2022, you know. Um, so but just because the velocity isn't there doesn't mean that inflation has disappeared. It's just the shock value, I think, is gone, you know, and I, I think you really have to be mindful of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how people try and get over that hump in the same way that, you know, you hear inflation's falling and that's really not the case. They just want the Fed just wants it to get back to where it's just going up by 2% off the numbers we're dealing with and so people um, are going to be facing some higher prices going forward, man. It'd be interesting to see how the Fed may, you know, meanders that um, as well. You talked about crude, you talked about gas. What do you think of the price of crude, man? A little volatility. We're stuck in the 70s right now, but crude up a bit off of the recent lows, pushing 76.94 on my chart. Yes, well, right now, especially the, the people who read the Tiger Forex report know that crude is right on our directional pivot level. So we fell below that. This is basically $77, 77 and a quarter level. And I think that it, above that, that's a very good support line. You know, if we can hold below that, I wouldn't say it's bearish, but I think you could bobble in the 77 to 70 dollar range. But above 77, I like it going back up to like 85, 90 dollars if we can sustain that trade. You know, I mean, I think that because we've had, you know, the um, what they're calling a prisoner exchange, which is really more of a ransom exchange going on in the Middle East, I think that's kind of put a pause on oil. You know, because of that. Um, but the tensions haven't stopped what's going on in the Middle East, let alone globally. So I, I'd be very mindful. Of of that, of that when it comes to oil, and I would be looking for more of an uptick in oil than a downtick. And we will see, man. I definitely appreciate that price of the pump. I'm sure we all do in the face yeah. of some pretty lofty, uh, as you said, that's the one thing right now that sticks out for sure. 
Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. It's always a quick nine minutes. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex Report. Check out those outstanding webinars Teddy has under the services tab. And uh, we'll talk to you next week, man. That was a quick nine Sounds minutes. Good. I appreciate it as always. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Teddy. Folks, check it out. We'll be back to finish up the program. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Quite the acceleration. S&P is pushing almost 4,600. We're at session highs right now, up by 32 points. How about the NASDAQ 100? Up by basically 1%, up 153. The Dow up 3 tenths percent right now. Let's check in on that gold contract, up another $5. We make it to 2072 last night. We're trading to 2065 keep saying it. if you haven't tried out that gold report great time to do it right now with what's happening with gold you check out the dollar index right dollar index at 102.82 and it is interesting right Teddy, Teddy laid out the case saying you know they're big moves but in the context of things they're not that big of moves I mean look at the move we have right as in yes we have higher price and lower yield okay and let's just take this off for a second for some clarity but can you can you even see higher price and lower yield on this chart not quite, man, if things really get going. So it'll be interesting to see. You jump over the dollar index, quite a pullback in the dollar index. Um, but again, well off some of the levels that we've seen. You even came into the pandemic trading at 97 on the dollar. We're still at 102 at a time when we may see yields dropping 
and weakening the dollar index as we go forward. S&P is going to finish this thing up basically at session highs. Remarkable. All right, what else we got going on? Yeah, that was pretty much it. We talked some Black Friday sales yesterday. Um, this one was out this morning. We'll sum it up with this one. Is that Best Buy they got in there? That sure is. It's Best Buy they got in there. Um, retailers and brands that rely on Black Friday the most, the day was a dud. Yeah. Median decline in Black Friday sales was 4%. Median decline for a group of 40 companies that generate a higher percentage of year-to-date sales from the shopping holiday than their peers. Uh, and there's just some of them. So some big winners, some big losers in there. But overall, a little bit of a dip. But guess what? The market's not worrying, man. And keep those two numbers on your radar that I've been talking about, folks. You're either talking about 4607 on the S&Ps, 4634, the recent high, and uh, the NASDAQ 100 within a stone's throw of all-time highs. Pretty remarkable. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. He did his program live at 8 o'clock tomorrow. That's coming up right now. We got our man Steve Rhodes live at 11 o'clock. Fast market coming up at 12. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, right? They're talking five below. They're talking Salesforce. They got a third one in there as well. And uh, yeah, our man Larry Pensamento live at one. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live from three till four. Have a great Wednesday, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow. We got inflation data tomorrow morning. Stay tuned for Basil coming up right now. Have a great one, folks.